Uh, Helen in North Carolina, you're on the Atheist Experience. You had a question about evolution? Yes. Um, well, I was watching the documentary Expelled, and I'm seeing all the ways that the, the atheists try to block arguments for intelligent design. And the That's one it. question I had is, where is, where is the proof that, do you know how many millions, billions of people have been in the world and all these fossils? You don't have proof that those are a common ancestor between humans and apes. It, they could yeah, simply have it, been people with deformities. No, and actually I'd recommend that you go look up um, some, something having to do with genetics because the fusing of chromosome 2 pretty much confirms common ancestry. And this is not even controversial. This is theists, particularly uh, Catholics who don't have a problem with evolution. The science is already there. It's the, the science of common ancestry is it's undeniable and it doesn't just exist in the fossil record. Um, it, it, by the way, you can't just say, oh, well, it was deformities, deformities, because these would be regular deformities that are also in the correct places in time. You don't find fossil rabbits in the Precambrian and evolution as a science makes predictions about what we're going to find with inter uh, intermediate forms, for example, Tiktaalik is something that we predicted. We knew exactly where to go look and in what layer of rocks to have the right time frame to have this particular thing, and it proves out. Um, I'd recommend, you know, actually going and studying the science rather than listening to, uh, well, Expelled is a terrible documentary that is full of lies. Terrible. Um, that terrible. doesn't have, you know, this is not controversial in science. This is only controversial in the minds of a handful of fundagelicals. And, and I know why. I get why it's a big issue, Helen, because if, if fundamentalists who believe in the, in the fall of man and original sin with Adam and Eve, that God placed them in the garden, and because they, they were disobedient, then all of us inherit that original sin, that we're born sinners. And if you take that truth out, if you take that part of the, the gospel story out, there's no need for Jesus to die. There's no need for a savior. We're not in need of salvation. And so I get why Christians, why fundamentalists need to disprove evolution and need to cling to the, the biblical narrative of Adam and Eve and original sin. I understand the problem, but going against science and trying to make an alternative view of science doesn't solve the problem. It doesn't get us there. Uh, well, I think though that that I, people are taking this and putting what they want onto it in order to try and disprove that there's a God. Well, you're right. There are people thinking taking this and putting what they want on it, and they're called fundamentalist Christians. Um, the scientists who are actual experts in this, who've spent their lives studying it, many many lifetimes, um, they're not putting what they want on anything. They're following the evidence where it leads. And the only thing that's ever corrected science is more science. So you can sit there as a non-expert and go, how do I know it's not just a bunch of humans with birth defects? And the scientists who study this can explain it to you, but you have to be willing to go listen to them and study the actual evidence rather than assuming the entirety of science is some sort of conspiracy cabal set to undermine your religion, which has no evidence for it at all. All of the evidence is with the scientists. None of the evidence is with religion. In the entire history of the world, the number of religious claims that have been disproved by science is staggering, and the number of science claims that have been disproved by religion is zero. Well, what about Lucy, though? What about Lucy? Lucy... What what corrected Lucy? Well, Science. Lucy was Lucy. How do you know that she could not have been just a short woman who had a deformity at that time? I I, I am not a biologist, to, and I'm not going to go into the details. But that's not what the issue is with Lucy. You should go look it up because there's a reason why how we find out some things are hoaxes or some things were misunderstood. And that reason is never because Jesus said so. It's always because we did more scientific investigation. Yeah, science is constantly fixing itself. That's the difference. Science is open to new ideas that, that will cause them to change their ideas about something. Religion starts with a fixed position 
and sets around trying to prove that. And then when science comes against that fixed position, then religion tries to figure out a way around the science. And that's what they've done with evolution. Wouldn't you agree, Helen, that the problem with evolution is that it takes away the original sin of the Garden of Eden? Well, I think so, yes. And I think, like I said, that, that they're just projecting what they want onto it. Well, uh, Helen? They have no, no, like Matt said, they're following the science. The evidence but, proves it. But it, So here's the thing. Do we have any evidence that the Garden of Eden story is true? Well, what about the mitochondrial Eve? That mitochondrial was, Eve is, an, is, is a constructed beginning of humans. It's not a single person that is the, the Eve in the biblical story. They used it um, because the Eve story is so popular that it makes sense. People are like, ah, of all the humans who are alive, our last common ancestor is here. And by the way, that will shift. But what evidence do we have that the Garden of Eden story is true at all? Well, I read in Time magazine that were, were, were there not fossils found in around Mesopotamia? Or Helen, Helen, are you are you afraid to answer the question that I've asked? Because I've asked repeatedly, what evidence do we have that the biblical story in Genesis, in the Garden of Eden, is true? Doesn't matter what Life magazine says about fossils. How do you know that the biblical account of the Garden of Eden is true? Well, how do I know? Because, uh, well, I know because I take it on faith because God said okay, There but, you go. But I, there you go. Is, is That's there, what it is. It's faith. Is there any position so, Ellen, that, you, why? that you couldn't take on faith? Because faith is the excuse people give when they don't have a good reason. If you have a good reason and evidence, you provide the good reason and evidence. And we don't have good reason and evidence, then you just say, I take it on faith. But you could take anything on faith. You could think white people are better than black people on faith, couldn't you? No, and that's another another thing is that you keep saying about slavery. Where does it say in the Bible that... The Exodus 21, Leviticus 25. We don't want to go down that road. Does it say people of a certain skin color should be slaves? No. It doesn't say people Does of a certain skin, skin color, but it, what it says is you shall buy your slaves from the heathen that surround you and that you can beat them as long as they don't, don't die within a couple of days. Are you suggesting that slavery is only wrong if we make it about race? Are you suggesting that it's okay to own people no. as property it's, as long as they're the same race as us? Well, I'm suggesting... Why are you, why are you so... Time. No, no, no. No, I asked about the fucking Garden of Eden and you offer nothing. What? And then I point out how, how we're, you know, the, the various issues here. And when you, you're like, oh, well, you always mention slavery. Yes. Do you think slavery is immoral, Helen? Do you think it's immoral to own people? I think that at that time, God knew the flaws of mankind and he was setting down regulations that if they were going to. I think you're making shit up so that you don't have to acknowledge the truth. Because the truth <laughs> is owning people as property is fucking immoral. And the fact that you can't say that should be an embarrassment. Well, Helen, I think, I think the reality... Girl. He knows... Hel Helen, you said, it, you said it with your own mouth. You want to take it on faith. And I don't know why... And Matt and I talked about this earlier in the show. I don't know why Christians go to such great lengths to try to prove something that doesn't have sufficient evidence when at the core of everything, it's just, I take it on faith. I just have faith because the Bible says it. And, and you have to understand, Helen, I, I, I used to believe that. And, I, and in terms of morality, I mean, I don't know why you got off on slavery. I don't know why you want to talk to Matt about slavery because you, you just you don't want to do that. Trust me. But the, the idea of, of Adam and Eve and original sin, I want to ask you this about morality. Do you think it's moral to hold another person responsible for someone's sins, to use a religious word, or someone's wrongdoings from generations before? Do you think it's it's okay morally for you to be responsible for something your great great grandfather did? Well, does God say that it is? 
I'm yes. not asking you that. I'm asking you yes. what you the think. Yes, the sins of the father shall be carried out to the fourth generation or the tenth generation, depending on which verse it goes to. And also, according to 1 Timothy 2, you're not allowed to, to, to teach or have authority over a man. Are you okay with that? I asked you, Helen, Helen, I asked you, do you think it's moral? I'm asking you. Yes. Yes. You think, think it's okay? It's moral if God thinks it's moral. Yes. We don't know what God thinks. Why do you even? You d how do you, show me what God thinks. How do we know what God thinks? Well, the Bible, Matt. It says so. You okay? Bible. Prove that the book prove prove that the book accurately represents what God thinks. Well, where does a seed come from? Do you That's have not no no, no Helen here? Helen. Every time I get you Jesus. to the point where you are He's completely all over the map, instead of answering the question, you jump to something else. Prove that the Bible it represents what God thinks. Well, how can you prove it doesn't? And if I don't if have to prove it doesn't, can you prove? Can you prove that the Quran doesn't speak for God? How about the Bhagavad Gita? Can you disprove all the other holy books that you don't believe in? Uh, well, well, you can look at there and see that there is not a savior. There's not someone who no, died. No, that's not relevant. That's Helen, not relevant. Helen, whether or not there's a savior. Helen. 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 It's not. That's it, only no because Harry you're Potter? assuming Christianity is true. Helen, can you prove but there's you can not look a Harry Potter? Religion? Helen, do you think there's a there's a person that, that lived in history named Harry Potter, a real person? Is that book purporting to be the true can, word of anything, or is can, that? It doesn't it, matter. It, it, it's a book, it, Helen. It's a book. Can you believe it's not mm -hmm. true? Can you prove it's not true? Because can I prove it's can not true? Can you prove because, it's not true? Okay. Can you prove there's no Harry Potter? Okay. Well, was there a prophet, J.K. Rowling, that said <sighs> Harry Potter existed? And, and Helen, there, if you're not going to argue, just, honestly, Helen, we're going to move on. Just, just admit you want to take it on faith but, and quit trying to prove it because you're embarrassing yourself. Really, you are. Because just admit say, you want to take I it on faith. Were, I, I did say, sir, there were fossils discovered around Mesopotamia. Uh, what the hell does that have yeah. to do? <sighs> Helen. Because that would be where the Bible says the Garden of Eden was. No, it doesn't. The Bible doesn't say answer. where the Garden of Eden is, which is why the Mormons think it's in fucking Missouri. You don't know your Bible is the problem. You don't know your Bible. She's listening. And you don't know science. Well, let me just ask you this, though. If, there was, if we were created, if there was an intelligent designer, would he not be a supreme being? Would, you, would, he, would he not I don't know, know what's good for I us? I don't know because I what? don't know what, what is possible to create. Could, could, is it possible that there's other aliens that created us? What on earth? But but first of all, that's a big if because you're assuming if we're created, then it was by a God. It's but a, you can't even show that we were created. Helen, the previous but caller God, said right, that... Anything but God. Helen, the previous caller was arguing for a, uh, an intelligent designer and that caused him to believe it was the God of Islam. So how is he wrong? Uh, well, I just mentioned because there is no savior in Islam who sacrificed himself. Why, why is we that relevant? How do you, why, why is that relevant to the truth? You can't prove that. You can't prove that happened. But hang on. If you're going to disqualify Islam because you say there's no savior in it, where did the criteria for a savior come from, Helen? Where did the criteria for a savior come from? Well, there had to be a perfect sacrifice in order. No, no, no. All of what you're spewing right now, Helen, is Christian doctrine. You don't get to assume Christianity is true in order to say Islam is false. That is fallacious. Because it shows that that, that religion does not teach sa self-sacrifice, which is key well, to Christianity. I, I get it. That maybe not... this, that, first of all, it doesn't matter if it's the key to Christianity. What matters is whether or not it's true. We're, you're assuming Christianity is the true religion. He's assuming Muslim. Uh, the Muslim is the true religion. So who's wrong? The Muslims, the atheists, the Buddhists, anyone who's not a Christian. How do you prove you're that? Right. How do you prove that? How do I prove Helen. that? I know because it says in the Bible. I know because Jesus is knocking at the door of both of your hearts every day. Do you realize that you're talking answering? to, do you realize, Helen, that you're talking to two former Christians, one ex-minister and one who was going to be a minister? Helen, I, I used to preach this stuff. I used to preach this stuff. I read the Bible back and forth, through and through, several times, cover to cover. 
We're asking you how to show that your beliefs are true and you are coming with absolutely nothing. Just because admit you want to take it on faith. Just admit. I mean, this well, you've I, got nothing. Again, I said in Meso Mesopotamia is where the... the middle, no, is it doesn't. The Bible does not say where the Garden of Eden is. It's specifically hidden. I'm sorry that you don't know your Bible any better than you know science. But we're asking you how you know something is true. And even if the Bible had said the Garden of Eden is Mesopotamia, and even if the earliest answers that we could trace back were in Mesopotamia, that would not prove that the Bible is true and that God is real. That's not how that works. You need to be able to demonstrate that the religion you believe is in fact true. How do you do that? It would be some evidence towards that, though, wouldn't it? Well, mm -hmm. Yes, and we're asking for the evidence that shows that your beliefs are true. All you've given us is what the Bible says. No, Helen, the Bible is not evidence. It's just not. You, you, you can't use the Bible to prove the Bible. It's circular reasoning, and you can't seem to or don't want to acknowledge that. And I'm just saying you'd be better off to just admit that you want to believe because it makes you feel good and just move on and don't try to prove it. Just don't, <laughs> just don't. I'd love, I'd actually disagree with Dave a little bit. I'd love for you to keep trying to prove it because the more, not, not here on the show, but the, the more you keep trying to prove it, the more likely it is you'll come to the same realization that we did. Because once on a time, Dave and I both believed the same things that you do pretty much. And we thought we had good Fervently. reason. And when we, when we sought to prove the truth of this, I'm an atheist because I set out to be the best Christian I could be because I wanted, I didn't want to get to heaven and have God say, Hey, why is your roommate who you love like a brother burning in hell? Because you did not share the, the truth of the scripture and you did not allow the Holy spirit to turn his heart. And so I sat to look for a way to confirm that my beliefs were true. And you know what? I found out that I didn't have a good reason and neither does anybody else. It's not just you. You have no expertise in this at all, Helen. I debate accomplished theologians, people with books thicker than I could possibly read, and they don't have any better arguments than, they, than you do. They just sound better because they've learned how to obfuscate and hide the fact that they don't have good reasons. You haven't figured out how to hide that yet, and I hope you never do. I hope you keep searching to find out a way to prove me wrong, prove there's a God, Mm -hmm. Because every step you take down that path brings you closer and closer to the realization that you don't know your book, you don't understand how to prove this, and you don't have a good reason. Every reason you've given just comes back to your assumption that Christianity is true. Islam's false because it doesn't have a savior. Well, who the hell said a savior makes something true? Nobody. Well, Jesus is knocking at the door of your hearts every day. Prove it. Oh, my God. I'm so tired. If Jesus if Jesus mm. wants to say something to me, he should fucking show up himself instead of sending you. Oh, and she hung up. Jesus is knocking at your well, door. She just, she she just wanted, wanted to, to get the last word in. Yeah, yeah. she wanted... I, I, that's, I think she's one of those people who think that God gives her some kind of stars in her... Uh, crowns in her... Yeah. In her thought, whatever, jewels in her crown because she calls in and tries to convert a couple of atheists. So she's probably high five in Jesus right now. 